Hello, hello everyone. It's me, the Metaverse Explorer. I'm back with another Town Hall from Star Atlas recap. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been a huge Town Hall. There's been so much stuff that they've actually uh, decided to let us know about. Not really released yet, but they're letting us know about it. And man, like uh, uh, people are super excited by the stuff that are still yet to come out. So uh, thank you very much for watching. This is Metaverse Explorer brought to you by uh, Aphia, brought to you by Funcracker and Prometheus. We are uh, one of the leading decks in uh, Star Atlas and we like to share information with the community. So let's get started with this town hall. Now, I apologize because there is a lot of info to cover. So I'm going to have to rush through a bit of it to try and keep the video under 20 minutes. Uh, a lot of people don't watch the videos when it goes over 20 minutes, so I'll try my best. Let's get started. First off, we have some major updates, right, for StarPath. StarPath is the referral program that Star Atlas is using. Um, so the, first off, they're looking at to they're looking to improve the uh, benefits because uh, from myself and even from Metaverse Nomads, we think that the uh, re, uh, the incentives for it are not very good at all. I, I thought they were pretty pretty substandard to be honest. So they're looking to um, improve some rewards that are being earned when the referral folks make a purchase themselves and also to make a discount somehow for those guys who come in using your own referral code, maybe my own referral code to be able to have discounts for them. So when they sign in using my referral code, they get a discount somehow. So that's very good. That's a good start there. I still think there'd be a, a bit more work to be done for the Star Atlas uh, Star Path. But hey, you know, I, I, I was honest in where I approached it first. I said, this is not for me now. Ask me why it's not for me. And uh, they seem to be asking uh, the community and getting some feedback from it and improving it. So nothing else to say there. The DAO as a major update. So there's currently six on-chain programs. Like right now, you can already stake your polis. Everyone knows this. Uh, and we've got some stats on the polis as well. So they have the DAO locker stats, which uh, uh, this is the statistics minus the team staking. We'll look at that. They, they have a uh, uh, website later that's going to be coming with more stats, as it says here. And there's a they made a last minute decision. Um, so basically, they said they everyone knows that the team has 108 million polis, right? First off, they only started staking the um, 8.5 million, um, uh, 8.5 million to reduce the amount of um, 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 uh, voting weight that the team has. They're targeting a 60 to 70 percent voting weight so that they can still control the future of Star Atlas for now in the short term. Um, but they're saying they're also going to uh, uh, inc increase it to a larger amount when needed to, to still maintain that 60 to uh, 70 percent, maybe uh, f f sorry, 50 to 60 percent voting distribution. So at the moment, that actually means that the APRs for the Polis DAO is high. Like five year lockup is 128 percent APR, not APY, not compounding, only APR. So that's 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 good. That's good. Now, um, in regards to the uh, Polis locking itself, we can see from this chart here that the team provided. This is excluding the team's wallets. Remember, this is excluding the team's wallets. Nearly 50% of the entire Star Atlas community is uh, locking their polis for five years, all the way at the top there, you can see. What, what does that mean? These, that means that 50% of the Star Atlas community currently is happy to lock away their polis and their vote in Star Atlas for the next five years. That's a giant vote of confidence, right? And then all the way at the bottom, we have people who are locking for two weeks only. Um, and that's fine, right? It depends on your time horizon. When do you need these funds by? How much liquidity do you need? Do you care about voting at all? Do you just want to play? You don't even have polis, then yeah, that that's, doesn't really matter, right? Um, so uh, what what I what I don't understand is the people in the middle. If you're going to be locking for one month, uh, if you're going to be locking for three months, six months, nine months, there's no big difference between them. If a token price crashes, it crashes like overnight in crypto. It crashes over like you know a week maybe. But like I don't, so I don't know why people uh, lock for these amounts of time. They give you different um, um, different uh, what do you call it um, voting weights. Um, so maybe that's what they're interested in, the voting weights. But they also may be interested in the different, um, they, if they have different accounts. 
I, some people, you might have your major playing account, right? Which is locked for five years. You might have that be like, that's what I play every day. That's your hot wallet, right? And then you also have your side wallets. You know, AFIA, some people have three wallets in total, like uh, maybe even more sometimes. And you have like your sub account, your secondary account, whatever alt account, right? And that account doesn't need to be staked for five years. You could just stake it for one year or nine months or three months or two weeks. I guess that's what some of these people are. And all of these guys have their different reasons, right? I want you to let me down, uh, let me know down below how many uh, uh, days, how many weeks, and how many years you've actually staked your polis for. Now, I've done a tutorial, I've done a test tutorial, I've, I've staked for five years, and I also have another wallet that's staked for two weeks. So I'm one of these groups, and I'm one of all the way at the top, all the way at the five years. So I want to, I want to know what you guys actually are. Uh, which is very interesting, right? You can see the statistics where uh, people are actually putting the vote of conference and it's five years, which is very good. Now, uh, keep in mind, uh, Star Atlas might come and uh, put theirs for one month, for nine months, for one year, and they will really severely skew these results, okay? Let's keep going. The Atlas locking. So that's for the Polis locking that we just talked about, right? This is now for the Atlas locking. Remember, for Atlas, the marketplace does not have any fees at the moment. The marketplace will have fees, and now we just found out that when Scream launch, when um the uh, R R four turns into R six, and when the Scream launch, when Scream launches, there will be a uh, secondary marketplace fee of six percent. What does that mean actually? So when you buy, sorry, <laughs> when you buy items from Star Atlas themselves, which is a first order purchase or a first market purchase directly from the team, that does not incur a fee. Okay, it's a straight out purchase, um, no taxes. When you buy from the secondary marketplace, if I put a ship on the marketplace and you come along and buy that ship, I am going to be losing 6% of the price that you bought it at, okay? It's a fee placed on the seller and not the buyer, okay? So you can come in and just pay for 200 Atlas and buy my item, okay? When I uh, uh, get that 200 Atlas, they minus 6%. So that's what the Atlas staking primarily is used for. So the 6% of fees, and, and shout out to Stefan as well, because they have this 6% rate. A lot of different uh, uh, tax, uh, a lot of different uh, companies in crypto have their little different uh, tax uh, incentives and tax uh, uh, fees on the community itself. 6% seems to be like a, a good range. It's a good start. They can uh, change this anytime. And the DAO convert to change this, right? 33% of the fee is shared to the DAO, okay? And then the rest actually goes to the team. So 33% goes to the Star Atlas DAO and that's uh, um, given out into Atlas. Through locking of Atlas, you can reduce the fee in five steps up to 85%. And that's the picture I'm just about to show you. So when you stake Atlas, not only do you get um, um, the reduced fees, but you also get Polis. It yields Polis rewards. We've got a picture, I'll show you. Now, there's a few caveats to this, right? You have to understand the nuances of when you stake and, and uh, the, the, the rules regarding staking. When you deposit, you get your marketplace fee instantly, okay? You get the marketplace fee discount instantly. The polis rewards are accrued over time. There is no minimum lockup time. So we saw in uh, the, the uh, polis lockup times, it's five, million, five years for maximum, two years, uh, two, two weeks for minimum. When you go over to the Atlas locking itself, there is no minimum duration or lock, but if you want to un if you want to withdraw, when you want to withdraw, it takes three weeks to get your um your Atlas out of that locking contract. Okay? It takes three weeks to get it out of that contract. All those three weeks you will not be earning polis and you will not be getting the marketplace fees. Okay, so that's a very important distinction. You can't really play this game. You can't just go lock a huge amount and then start withdrawing it immediately and use all the benefits. No, it'll take three weeks. Okay, so you gotta be super careful with this. So if, if you need liquid Atlas, like right now, if you need to pay back a, a loan or something, if you need to deposit it somewhere, then it's probably not good because you'll, you'll be stuck for three weeks. Not cool, okay? So you only actually do this if you're looking for one, the marketplace uh, fee rebate, and if you're looking for a slight yield on your Atlas to give you Polis, okay? Now, this is the picture. It looks very similar to the Star Atlas uh, Polis locker itself. We can see at the top here, there's 90,000. This is just one wallet who showed us their, their locking, right? There's total uh, Atlas in circulation, 90 million. Uh, fee reduction is 25, 
uh, percent based on this account as well. And you can see on the top right, the next daily reward drop, which is the amount of Polis being dropped per day. Um, and you get a slice of that pie, depending how much of that of Atlas of that pie you have in Atlas. Okay. Um, so this wallet itself, I'm going to go over here and I'll show you, it's got 35,000 Atlas. Okay. And over here, um, they've locked tokens of, uh, 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 locked tokens, 560 million. Is that right? Is that right? I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure about that. Um, and over here is the unlocked rewards for them, unclaimed rewards. So they can claim right now four Polis, which is not bad. The next drop is as well will be four Polis, which is a bit weird. That means between this, this last period and the next period, there hasn't been any changes in the amount of Atlas being staked by someone else. Let's keep going. This is what I find really interesting. Okay. So these are the tiers of Atlas locking. Okay. If you lock no Atlas at all, you're going to start at zero. You'll be at tier zero and your fee is going to be 6% um, flat rate on secondary. Remember on secondary, not first, not first sales. So uh, you lock zero, you get 6% fee. If you go to tier one, you're going to lock 10,000 Atlas right there. 10,000 Atlas, which in today's Atlas token USDC pair pricing is $78. Okay. If you lock $78, your fee gets reduced from 6% all the way to 5.4%. Okay. If you lock $550, which is tier number two, 70,000 Atlas, you'll get 5.1% fee um, instead of a 6% fee. Is that worth it for you? Is it worth um, staking $550 of worth of Atlas to get 0.9% uh, fee reduction? That's up to you. How much are you going to be buying on secondary marketplace? Are you going to be buying a lot? at all secondary? Are you just going to be buying your fuel, your repair kits? Like right now you can buy them, right? But later on, you'll have to buy secondary because it's going to be the, um, uh, the, uh, the community that's creating these fuel and, 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 and extra things for us to use. Are you going to be buying more ships? Is it, is it going to be worth it to have 0.9% discount um, on top like of someone else that's, that's selling their ships? That's up to you. You know, for me, I, I'm actually like within this range. I'm not within this range. I don't need, I'm not going to be buying and selling so much. I'm not like a trader. I'm, I want to play the game. So I'm not going to be using um, the marketplace secondary that much. So I think I'm in this range, being honest. I think a lot of people are also in this range. And this is way more achievable than this. And then even more achievable than this. Now let's, let's go on all the way to the last point, which is the, like the tier five, you're going to have to lock 72 million at it, 72 million Atlas. Okay. Your fee reduction is 85%. Your total fee that you're going to be paying on secondary marketplace is 0.9%. And that is $500,000, half a million dollars. I don't know if anyone's even going to get to tier five. We saw the posters. Some people are paid tier five, but like no one's going to get there at the, at this stage. Absolutely no one. Okay. Trust me. Maybe some guilds themselves will have one major wallet and they'll pay $44,000. Maybe some smaller guild will pay 4,000, even smaller, 550. But like there's no infrastructure for the guilds at the moment. So it's just the um, individual wallets at the moment. Crazy, right? Crazy, crazy. So my question to you, what discount are you going to, what tier are you going to be making yourself in the Atlas locking uh, um, locker? And I, I want to know because I am actually probably going to be this one or this one because I have enough of this. This is easy. This one, not so easy for a lot of people, right? Um, yeah. And remember, uh, I'll move on from this, but remember fees are actually for the seller. They're not for the buyer itself. So it's only for me that's putting something onto the marketplace. The buyer doesn't pay them, the seller is. Um, and also the Polis rewards, of course, are based on the, the share of the Atlas take. So the Polis rewards have a set amount. There's a pie. You come across and give, bring your ticket that say, I've got 1% of this pie. Give me that Polis for that duration of time. Let's move on. I feel like I'm talking too much. So let's keep going. Showroom. Definitely Easter eggs coming. I'm hoping we can find that we can fly around and go and find the ships, uh, go and find the uh, NFT of the comic. Now, there was a question that was posed. The pending release of the showroom is not yet the full one. We know this, right? The showroom is not complete. There will be uh, uh, releasing little sections of it, modules of it at the same, at, at different times. What upgrades can people expect between the two releases? Now, I'm a bit confused with this because now I think there's only going to be one release, which is October. 
because the team wanted to wait for a strategic partnership uh, announcement and you know uh, it'll make it a bit better and they say yeah it's better to wait to, for this so in answer to the question they're restructuring the map why are they restructuring the map because when people uh when the team went up with the uh ships in the flying module you could see a lot of the map right when it's not just on the ground where you have your field of view which is like only a small plane when you go up into the space and you do the flying module you're able to see the rest of the entire map and then the team the team i uh, kind of saw that the map is like small considering considering that you are in a ship and that you can see way further out than when you're on the ground and can see only a small plane so he's saying they're saying they're actually restructuring the map because the flight module is ready sooner than expected you'll be able to summon the psx4 and fly around the map they want to make sure that when you fly around the map you can see a lot of stuff there's no point flying for 30 seconds here and then it's just like dead space it's like like uh, there's, there's nothing past that space it just looks crap you would fly 30 seconds here and that's it no they want you to be able to fly a, a good enough amount of distance maybe turn sometimes do a few things but they want to make it so that the map is a bit more fleshed out even if the central points that we do things in like where the giant structure is where you summon your ships you should still be able to see some stuff way further out if you want to fly your ship for a minute two minutes three minutes going this way Furthermore, there is going to be multiplayer. We know this already, and there's going to be a little social feature. Um, but this will come way later on down the line. Maybe October. Uh, sprinkle salt on that, of course. Um, and the reason, uh, and one of the things they said is, um, the you'll have the ability to see others fly around on the map. What does that mean? That means there should be competitions, right? You have a flying ship. Um, you know where com people are competitive. There, there's already a racetrack. And there's people, other people there. So we should be able to do some form of racing. Now, they did say there is a 30 person max because this is the limitation uh, placed on uh, UE5 by uh, Epic Games themselves. And there's no point trying to use resources to try and go above this rate to, um, to, to get like 100 people in. It'll come later on down the line, right? But for now, a DAC, me and you, we can commu we can uh, have enough fun with 32 people in like a, a, a load up instance for ourselves. Like uh, you can have a guild meeting, you can have a town hall over there and no problem at all, no problems at all. Okay, let's move on. This is where Chipto comes in guys and Chipto, man, did he bring some nice stuff for us to see. Super, super exciting. Um, this is of course not Chipto. Uh, this is a kid eating chips, but of course, that's Chipto. Um, let's have a look at what Scream, uh, what information he brought for us for Scream. So, one thing we need to consider, guys, there's going to be a huge supply shock coming, okay? In Scream, the team actually stops providing R4s, which is your fuel, your food, your um, uh, uh, repair kits, all this sort of stuff, your tools. This, the team is going to stop doing that. And then the community is going to have to start going out to find the R20s um, and try and make all these R4s for us, okay? There is going to be a huge supply shock. The team's going to stop it and everyone's not going to know how or uh, when they should start selling this stuff or, the, uh, or how to collect it, how to craft it all together. There's going to be a huge time lag between the player base, uh, between the, the guild, uh, the, the Star Atlas stopping the release of R4s and the rest of the community player base starting to produce it at an efficient enough level to meet the demand of what is required. So I'm actually playing this myself. I'm going to be buying, I'm stocking up on R4s right now. I'm stocking up so much, it's not funny. Because I know, like, even if I buy it now, that most people are not going to be selling it for much lower than the price that I'm buying it now for. So if anything, I'll still be able to use it for my own fleets, right? And and I'll need them to power the rest of my fleet. So I'm stocking up on, on my resources right, right now, to be honest. And I would recommend other people do the same as well. At least enough to cover you until you're able to produce your own R4s. So this is what we're saying. In Scream, the team stops providing R4. Community will manufacture them at the star bases and sell them directly. The map is a collection of star systems. In order for a faction to own such a system, they need to build a mega structure called a star base. Star bases, what can you do with them? You can dock your ships. You use them for resources. Uh, that's where you use your resources, sorry. You can craft your R4s, which is what I was just talking about. Uh, you upgrade your star bases, and of course you defend it. And we know already you can leave your ships there to defend it overnight while you sleep, but they'll be NPC controlled. 
upgrading it, you improve the tiers, which opens access to more planets in the system to mine. So first off, you'll start off with a small sphere of influence. And as you upgrade that star base, your sphere of influence increases and you're able to go further to mine more uh, resources and come back into that star base. Um, so we have some new info as well. As you build and star bases, oh, this is the info I was just talking about. As you build the star bases, you'll be able to go around to much further length to try and get the, um, the, the, the resources you need. I'm sorry, guys, this is becoming a lot of a big, a bit of a bigger, uh, a town hall, but this is the most important part of the video where I show you scream scream is the, uh, uh um, uh, web-based web GL, uh, game that we're all super excited for. And I want to show you. Okay. Let's watch. <laughs> Look at how clean that is. I'll play it again and we'll, we'll talk through it. Okay, so I'm going to play that again, and then this time no sound, and I am going to talk about what we're actually seeing, okay? So this is the showroom module, right? We have already can see there's four um, um, uh, hangar spaces for you, and we are we know we are in the hangar spaces because on the bottom right, it says exit the hangar, so we're in the hangar space. We've loaded a Calico Hero at the moment, and you can see on the top right-hand side corner, we are a tier four hangar space, which means we have four spaces, okay? You can see there's a plus icon on the right-hand side to add extra. Um, so Calico Hero, look at the details on this. I am so super impressed for a web game how well the details are on this. This is the Calico ATS Enforcer, which has a giant dong uh, attached to it. It actually, I said in the Twitter spaces afterwards that it looks like a, uh, a giant transformer. So I'm super happy with this. It looks really, really cool. This view that we have here is what the team is what we will be able to do. You can view all the way around your ship. Okay, so it's not like a development mode. We'll have access to this. This is the Calico uh, um, uh, e Evac. No, the MedTech itself. So you can see they've already made lots of different assets, right? And they're just importing them into there. Now, what I wanted to pause here and show you uh, very quickly. I, I'm sorry. Oh, no. Ah. Yeah, I'm going to pause it and show you. And show you something here this is what i wanted to show you ah oh. anyway the ships themselves the ships themselves like doesn't matter how big the ship is right it comes up and it populates the entire uh tile that you have so this is a calico hero which is i think a medium ship right and then you can have a small ship which was the calico medtech now they come up and blow up into the size of the entire tile so that means they have to be, they have to actually create good graphics for the rest of this because we will be able to zoom in and go all the way around. Okay. So when you load up a PSX4 or a Fimble air bike, it should be as big as this, even though it's not actually the same size. Okay. Much, much magnitudes of, uh, order of magnitudes lower. Okay. The ATS Enforcer is much bigger than a Calico, uh, MedTech. Uh, uh, yeah. But they look the same on the tile. Does that make sense? What I'm saying? It just looks cool. I am so super glad we saw this. Now I'm going to do another video breaking all this down because there's even more stuff down here that we need to talk about. Okay. We can see the hangar, your inventory and your crafting. These are the three main things we'll be able to do in our star bases and in our hangar. All right. There's a lot of stuff guys. So let's talk some more crafting new information. I'm going to try and run through it a bit quicker because we're already at the 25 minute mark. I'm so sorry guys. It's just, it's just keep going. 
Number one, you're gonna bring your resources to the starbase where, where you get it stored. So resources you mine in the periphery of the starbase in the star system, uh, and then you bring that to your starbase. When you want to craft, you have to dock your ship at the starbase because it's going to be your crew members and it depends on the number of your crew members on that ship or the ships that you have is how many of those crew members um, that will be able to craft for you, okay? So crew members are now becoming very, very important. And if they have different specialties, they become more important potentially. We don't know if they have any tier system in the crew members themselves. Um, like if you got a crew member from a Titan ship and you got a crew member from a Fimble Airbike, are they the same crew member? Not, they're not supposed to be, but we'll see how they actually do it. But the crux of it is that you're going to need your crew members and the, the number of them to craft your R4s. So baseline, the more crew members you have, the better position you are in. So we might see some ships starting to fly that have more crew members. Bringing more crew members will increase your crafting speed, okay? Players can dock multiple ships and all those crew members will be able to help, okay? It's all like uh, uh, stacking on each other. There is no limit to the amount of ships you can dock in a single star base. So you can have multiple, multiple different star uh, ships docked in different hangars, um, hopefully in different hangars, that's what my understanding is. And then you'll be able to craft way, way faster. Now, my question is, is it actually going to be balanced? Because let's say you have a ship, a medium ship, a Calico Hero with uh, five crew members, okay? That's what it probably comes with. Um, and, and they're all fine. Five crew members for a Calico uh, Hero. Um, and you craft based on five members of your, of your, of your fleet, of your ship so, uh, hangar. What's the difference in that and having, for the same price of that Calico Hero, buying 200 uh, Fimble air bikes and using 200 crew members to craft much, much faster than the five uh, members of your Calico Hero. So there will be some balancing. I uh, probably won't be able to load 200 ships, of course. Just I'm just using like a, an example. But hey, this is something that the team has to think about, right? If they're basing it on the number of crew members and not the quality of crew members, okay? I'm really hoping it's quality of crew members. If the ship is an uncommon medium ship, medium crew members, whatever, right? Whatever the metrics are. Okay, let's keep going. This is the after party, um, which uh, Ash's host is, we, media host for Star Atlas. And that we got a few extra information, right? We know the multiplayer cap is 32 players, which is based on the UE5 limitations. There will likely be a text chat in, in the showroom itself, but now they're also looking to possibly integrating voice chat. I think voice chat is essential. Um, voice chat is needed for us to have a more immersive feel in the in the uh, showroom. It'll come later. Don't 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 make the team do all of all of this extra stuff where they should be focusing on what's important. Multiple instances of the service. So you and me, I can probably host a small live video here for 32 members for people who want to come. Uh, you can set up your own servers, invite your own people. I'll probably have my own server if possible, and I'll have it gated so that people can just come and chat with me and, you know, make content ideas with me so I can uh, um, um, get content out to the rest of the community. Um, someone did ask a question about, you know, if we're going to be chatting um, or we're going to be talking, that means people need usernames. So does that mean the usernames might be coming soon? Uh, he didn't really give a, a, a strong answer. It was like, there's no on-chain avatar naming system at the moment because we know uh, uh, Solana naming service already exists with Bonfita. Um, and it's just going to be temporary, old school, select your username, uh, Metaverse Explorer, um, and you don't have to sign a transaction. You don't have to prove identity of that username. Nothing like that at the moment. All right. So... Um, there is extra stuff just before we finish 30 minutes. I'm going to get it under 30. I'm so sorry, guys. Guild tooling, look into them. They're looking currently into multi-sig solutions so that we can get guilds uh, more ownership over their assets. They might recommend Goki, but, you know, the space changes uh, every, every so often. So we'll see. Showroom could be released today, but the opportunity was that uh, they want to present it with a new partner which I actually think is Epic Games and that we might have Star Alice on the Epic Game launch, uh, launcher itself and that, you know, they'll be able to say, hey, look at these uh, companies that are uh, releasing uh, Nanite and UE5 material and like uh, uh, professional companies. So that'll bring us a whole lot of new people to be interested in Star Alice. So we'll see. If they want to incorporate that, it's a better dis uh, strategic decision for them. And lastly, I want to end on the comic, which I asked uh, uh, Michael Wagner about. The comic issue number one is actually ready. 
it's actually done, but they're waiting for a, a more optimized distribution, which just means like they're waiting for a st strategic time to release it just like they are for the showroom itself. So they're trying to get it done for the next two to six event. We'll see. Okay. The comic number one is done and guys, we're going to review this comic, make some, um, make some, um, uh, comments to uh, the uh, uh, Tim McBurney, who's the creator of this comic, and you guys know I've interviewed him already. So, this is what the comic front page might look like. I'm not too sure because I dragged this from Twitter. It looks cool. It looks very similar to what we had before, but this looks more epic than the one before. The other one was just like a solemn, like it's a guy sitting on the ground with some kind of flowers, and now it looks like the guy's a bit more serious. So. I love, I love it a bit more serious and a um, bit more serious uh, tone to it. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. This has been Metaverse Explorer. Uh, town Hall recap, 30 minutes, pow, pow, pow. Make sure you like and subscribe for me. A lot of my viewers are from Star Atlas itself. Um, so thank you very much to Funcracker. As always, thank you to uh, Prometheus. Thank you to Aphia. Thank you to Santi. Thank you to Ashes. Thank you to uh, Michael Wagner for giving us some good information to work on for the for the next uh, kind of kind of months until we get some gameplay okay i'm gonna end it there thank you very much ciao i need to drink some water oh my god ciao for now